My sister and I own lots of pets while growing up. I love cats. We own several cats. Sadly, they are all dead now. We had relatively few numbers of hamsters, you know, the small rodents that look like giant rats. At one point, I wanted to have guinea pigs, but my parents said no. Scary. No reptiles, though. I am glad my sister did not ask to own any reptiles. Who knows, my dad, a veterinarian, would have bought her one. Crazy, yeah? I am scared of snakes. They make my skin crawl. Ugh. Speaking of cats' nine lives, those animals age, don't they? We had a female cat that almost lived forever. I believe she was as old as my grandma. She was named Sot. I never knew what that name meant. We got her from the animal shelter. She was kind, almost human, and understood and obeyed the command. I am not kidding. She does. Some believe that dogs are more intelligent than cats, but I don't know about that. We had a dog too, and I can't tell you which one was smarter between Salt and our dog. To me, they are all beautiful, intelligent, and loving creatures. My parents were kind to allow us to enjoy them while growing up. Thank God. Cats are domestic animals and house pets loved by many. Remember those early YouTube days around 2006 when most viral videos on YouTube are about cats? It goes to show that there are many cat lovers out there. Just think about that. Where would YouTube be today if it weren't for cats? I am allergic to certain blooming plants and flowers. I remember mine always got worse during the fall and spring when the trees started to grow new leaves and flowers. As for cat allergies, I don't believe I have any allergies due to cats. I had a friend who loved our cats but could not own a cat because he was allergic to cats. I played with our cats all the time and never experienced any allergy due to the cats. Same thing with my sister. My mom, however, is a different story. She is allergic to everything. I mentioned our cat named Salt earlier, and she was a good cat, but our other cat was not so friendly. He was a little on the crazy side. He is named Frosty. We called him Frosty because we found him in early November. The weather was beginning to get cold and frosty when we found him. One day, in early November morning, my sister heard a meow noise behind our attached car garage. She went back there and saw this beautiful brown cat, a male cat. He looked very healthy but was hungry. My sister rushed into the house, told my mom, and asked if she could keep it. Mom said no. She said that the mother could be somewhere around and that we should not take the cat. She gave my sister permission to put some cat food in the bowl and give it to the cat. And she did. A couple of days passed and the cat was still back there, meowing and crying all the time. My mom felt sorry for the cat and told us to bring it into the house. We were so happy and excited, but that excitement did not last. Quickly, our happiness and excitement turned into a nightmare. Frosty was an evil cat. I mean, a bad cat. He gets into everything. He jumps to the kitchen counter often, and if you leave any food on the counter, this crazy cat will get into it. Frosty likes to chew on everything, couch, chairs, wires, you name it. Everything he saw, he would jump on or scratch. He would constantly chew on cable wires, and that scared me. I always thought he would one day electrocute himself from chewing on wires, but he did not. I guess the saying that cats have nine lives meant something after all. And even worse about our cat Frosty is that he harasses our ancient and kind cat Sots. The good thing we did when we decided to keep Frosty was that my dad, who was a veterinarian, had him neutered. We did not think that our very old Sot, whom I believed is as old as my grandma, would get pregnant, but we wanted to play it safe. Frosty's behavior was so strange that my sister and I wanted to put him out, but our dad discouraged us. He said that the behavior was not that unusual, that Frosty was reacting to a new environment. We told dad that he was making Sot's life difficult. Salt would jump to the couch to play or greet us, and Frosty would come chasing her out and trying to fight with her. One day, Frosty got himself into a big sticky wicket. He nearly got himself killed. He crawled and hid under the cushion on the arm of the couch. I did not see him, so I sat on the pillow on top of him and nearly killed him. He yowled and howled so loud that he scared the living daylights out of me. I almost peed on myself. That was how scary and scared I was. Crazy cat. We had one other cat, but there was nothing extraordinary about him. 
He was not a troublemaker like Frosty or anything as wholesome and wonderful as Salt. He was just a cat, a plain cat. We loved him, but there was nothing special about him. Like the rest of our cats, he is dead also. We got him from the animal shelter just like Salt. I know that I am not speaking for everybody. I know some people don't like cats for some reason, and I understand that. Some don't want them because they are fickle and can swat, scratch, or even hiss at you when you make them angry. I understand all that. My sister and I loved our cats. Even my mom, allergic to almost everything, loved them too. We no longer own cats. They all passed a long time ago. So sad. When Salt died, we had her cremated and put her ashes in a jar. We still have that jar, which reminds us of her and the happiness she brought into our lives. She died of old age. We knew she was going to die even weeks before she passed. She stopped eating, stopped jumping into a couch to cuddle and play with us. We don't know if she was in pain, but we suspected she might be. We thought about putting her down, but my sister and I talked our dad out of that idea. We were not ready for her to go. It was sad. One day, we woke up in the morning, and she was gone. After Salt passed, we were left with Frosty and Leonardo, our two male felines. Leonardo lived many years after Salt passed, but Frosty died a few years later after we lost our best cat, Salt. Unfortunately, his death was not peaceful. It was very tragic. We knew his aggressive behavior would get him into trouble one day, but we did not realize that it would take his life. So sad. One day, in our laundry room downstairs, we found Frosty dead. He drank laundry bleach. How that happened is still a mystery to us today. He jumped onto the laundry machine, knocked down the bottle of bleach on the floor, and broke the cap. And the bleach leaked all over the floor. The bottle was closed with the lid tight. We assumed that he must have drank the liquid which killed him, because nobody saw it happen. My sister and I had good memories of our animal friends, the cats, dogs, and horses. It was a good life growing up and loving those fantastic god creatures we call man's best friends. We remember Salt every time we see that cremated ashes in the jar that reminds us of her and the joy she brought into our lives. Frosty is still remembered, but not for a good reason, unfortunately. He is remembered every time we see those scratches and torn apart antique furniture that he left us with. And Leonardo. We missed him, especially when we look into those old family pictures where we pose with our animals. Something extraordinary happened to me many years after Salt died. And guys, this is a true story. One morning, I was walking home, and suddenly a cat that looked exactly like our Salt appeared out of nowhere. When I first saw this cat, my heart started beating so fast. I said, that cat looks just like Salt. A beautiful and playful black and white cat, this cat ran towards me out of nowhere and started pulling and nipping on my pants. Wow, this cat is unafraid and very friendly. As the cat kept crisscrossing and nipping on my leg, I said to myself, I think this cat is hungry. Then another thought crossed my mind. I told myself, but we don't have cat food at home. What am I going to do if this cat followed me home? I was conflicted about what to do as this cat followed me. Another thought crossed my mind. If I decided to keep this cat, would it be like Salt? Or would it be another feral feline, like Frosty? And suddenly, as I approached our driveway and walked home, the cat stopped at the edge of our driveway and refused to follow. As I walked deeper inside our driveway, a girl that was walking passed by, and the cat turned and followed her. Unbelievable. I have never forgotten that experience. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel. I appreciate you all. Please share, like, subscribe, I hope and you like the video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you.